This island is the centre of the universe. It is the heart of our Mother Earth. In school, we were all indoctrinated with this map, the Mercator Projection. But this is an updated version. Here is the original map, drawn by Gerardus Mercator in 1569. On this map, Mercator drew the North Pole in a very different way than we are used to seeing. He drew it as an almost circular continent, divided into four large rivers and with an island in the centre. This representation of the North Pole was influenced by the book Inventio Fortunata, a book that was suspiciously lost, dating from the 14th century. This is how Mercator describes this curious island in a letter to John Dee, a notorious mathematician, astrologer, occultist and advisor to Queen Elizabeth I of England. In the midst of the four countries is a whirlpool, into which there empty these four indrawing seas which divide the north, and the water rushes round and descends into the earth, just as if one were pouring it through a filter funnel. It is four degrees wide on every side of the pole, that is to say, eight degrees altogether, except that right under the pole, there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea, its circumference is around 33 French miles, and it's all of magnetic stone. This mountain, located in the north, Mercator calls it Rupees Nigra, and he was not the only one to represent it on maps. From the 17th century onwards, this traditional depiction of the North Pole began to disappear, which coincides with the expansion of heliocentrism. We have lost the North. This famous expression now makes complete sense. If we look at ancient cultures, we see that they also spoke of a similar place, a sacred land, with a tree, a mountain, or a central pillar. In the Vedic texts, a great mountain of gold is described in the center of the earth. They call it Mount Maru. It is said that this mountain is narrower at the bottom than at the top, and that a trickle of water falls above it and divides into four large rivers. One of these rivers is the Ganges River, which is why its water is sacred and miraculous. After purifying the seven planets near Druvaloka, the pole star, the Ganges water is carried through the spaceways of the demigods, in billions of celestial aeroplanes. Then it inundates the moon and finally reaches Lord Brahma's abode, atop Mount Maru. On top of Mount Maru, the Ganges divides into four branches, each of which gushes in a different direction. In Norsk mythology, there is talk of the great tree Yggdrasil, and just below there is a whirlpool from which all the rivers flow. In Celtic mythology, they refer to it as Avalon, and to the Greeks it is known as Hyperborea. In the Bible, this place is referred to as the Garden of Eden, where the Tree of Life is located. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The Tree of Life was in the midst of the garden, and the Tree of Knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, 
on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees, with branches abiding and blooming. And there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. This centre has been talked about for many centuries, and has received multiple names. Rupees Nigra, Mount Maru, the Tree of Life, the Cosmic Axis, or Axis Mundi, are all significant examples. This centre is the Axis of Creation. It's located just below Polaris, and it is the physical representation of the source from which everything is created. It is the magnetic North Pole to which all compasses point. All of the ancient civilizations were describing the same thing, the electromagnetic toroidal field of the universe, which rotates the entire sky, including the sun, the moon, and the stars. <laughs>